What up, though? Y'all already know how it goes. Smash, like, subscribe, comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. You dig? Big shout out to Gus Barnes. He wrote this story. Listen to me. Gus Barnes wrote this story. Okay, this is about Vincent Smothers, one of Detroit's most notorious hitmen who's been um, taking a lot of cases for people. He got Devontae Stanford out. Devontae Stanford was like, I believe, 14 or 15 years old when he got locked up. This is back in 2000 because I was in juvenile with him. Um, this is back in 2000 and I would say eight or nine or something like that. Um, Devontae Stanford recently was released be, uh, exoneration because he was convicted at 14 years old of a quadruple homicide, and they call it Ryan Nav murders, quadruple homicide, but. Uh, Ryan Ave, some of y'all might call it that, but yeah, Ryan Ave murders that he went in the spot and killed four people. And they say that, you know, Devontae is mentally uh, challenged, blind in one eye, so on and so forth, but he admitted to a murder. And, you know, people admit to murders all the time, and uh, he's no exception. Um, but he did. Uh, eight or ten years. I own your max. He was there for most of the time. Uh, level five. I know he uh four five power rule. Um, and he got a good name for himself because he's gonna go. He's he, you know he does his thing. Okay. Um, I never seen him in prison. I, well, I, I did a pass by with him, but I never I never really you know got to interact with him or nothing like that outside of juvenile. Uh, was he a little off um i don't think so i don't think he was off but that definitely helped with his case or whatnot he's very smart intelligent and he's doing good things out here with himself i heard he just got shot recently that's the interview with uh 82 baby J. um when it was over i don't know maybe we can get the details on that because i know y'all want to know but um again shout gus burns Gus Burns. But before I get into this video, I want to shout out cancelbadcredit.com. Please go check the links in the description. Trust me, that's something that you want to do. You're going to be hearing a lot of that from me. You dig? And he's also going to help me get the stuff off of my name that people stole and put on my name with, uh, you know, my credit and, and, and so on and so forth. And I'll be working very close with the brother. So I hope you guys just. Click the link. It ain't that hard. Please go click all the other links in the in the, in the, in the description also too. But shout out Gus Barnes, um, F Bar uh, F Barnes at uh, MLive dot com. Okay, um, I want to do you know th this video on the notorious hitman Vincent Smothers. He been freeing a lot of guys, people that got um, caught up for his murders. It's a lot of detail to that that I do know firsthand, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to ruin anybody's appeal chances or nothing like that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely some crazy, crazy business going on. Um, let me get into this real quick. A Detroit judge is being asked to free a convicted murderer on the word of a hitman. Vincent Smothers, 36, who's, I think he's 37 now. Vincent Smothers, 36, who's serving numerous 50 to 100 year sentences for 14 murder convictions dating back to 2007, has taken credit for five more murders he's yet to be charged with. Wow. 14 murders. This guy, what? 13 years after a 2004 double shooting in Detroit that killed one of the victims, Smothers is now claiming he pulled the trigger. The convicted shooter, Thelonious Sean Ceresi, now 37, is serving a life prison sentence after a jury found him guilty of first-degree murder and other crimes in the double shooting. I have discovered your name while searching through cases in the law library about prosecutorial misconduct Smothers wrote in a letter to Cerisi on August 22, 2015 upon reading your case I found out you were locked up for a crime I committed according to copy Cerisi forwarded to M Live Smothers sent similar letters taking responsibility for the crime to Governor Rick Snyder and Dateline NBC reporter Lester Holt shout Lester Holt 
<laughs> Y'all know the story with him. In an interview with a private investigator working for Cersei, Smothers said he also sent an affidavit to Detroit police admitting to the murder, while Wayne County Assistant Prosecutor Maria Miller said it's not something that happens with great frequency. It's not unheard of for people to take credit for murders they didn't commit. And this is the truth. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm not taking no sides. I, when I do what I do, I can't take no sides. Guys get paid a lot of money to take murders they didn't commit. Runyon Street smothers a self-admitted for hire killer with little to lose. Claims he also killed four people in 2007 drug-related slaying on Runyon uh, street in Detroit, for which then 14-year-old Devontae Stafford was wrongly convicted. Smothers admitted to the Runyon Street killings weeks after S Sanford, excuse me if I said Stafford, it is Sanford, who suffered from learning disabilities, accepted a plea. And he accepted a plea like 40 or 45 years. God damn. Ugh. Sanford pleaded guilty to second-degree murder as a part of an agreement to avoid a possible life sentence, as his attorney said. Sanford, at the time, had already confessed to the killings after an interrogation that took place without his guardian or attorney present. And um, in Devontae's defense, he said he used the Uzi, but it was an AK, or vice versa. Um, but, yeah, so I, I really think this is legit. He was ultimately released from prison in 2016 at 23 years old. So he got locked up when he was 14, so he did about nine years. When Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy, she's the devil, a.k.a. the devil, um, said she would no longer pursue charges against Sanford, she attributed her decision to possible perjury by a former Detroit police officer regarding Sanford's confession. She didn't absolve Sanford or give credence to Smothers' claim that he was the actual killer, although Smothers said in the affidavit he could testify to details from the crime scene that only the true killer would know, and he definitely did that. We have given a substantial work request to state police for further investigation into the Ryan Street killing, said Miller, when asked about the status of the case. While there is no guarantee Smothers' new admission will impact Cersei's life sentences, it is at least offer Cersei a glimmer chance of hope. Something that previously had all but faded. After his conviction, Cersei filed a series of unsuccessful appeals. The state Supreme Court refused to hear his case and multiple motions for relief were denied by uh, Wayne County Circuit Judge Timothy Kinney, who presided over the original trial, and he's uh, also another devil. Cersei claims his attorney failed him that witness were paid and the prosecutors violated court rules by failing to disclose a prior arrest of witnesses among allegations. The stories contain a detailed summary of the trial case and Cersei's claim. None of the claims convinced a court to reconsider the case. Cersei had no more avenues to argue his conviction that is unless there was new never before her evidence and that's one of the worst feelings that you could ever get because that point right there you give up all hope. That's where some other statements are crucial. They gave Cersei new grounds to file another motion for relief for judgment, which he did in July of 2016. A judge has authority to dismiss such a motion without holding a hearing or requesting a response from the prosecutor's office. But Cersei's latest filing persuaded Kenny to take it a step further. The filing included some other affidavit admitting guilt. Accompanied by a label map of the crime scene, the original letter Smothers had wrote to Cersei from behind bars, and a brief written, uh, and a brief written by Smothers himself. Instead of denying the motion, the judge asked for a written response from the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Worthy's office has until August to respond. Um, the murder. It was dusk on a clear night in. Early September 2004, Connor Street, east of Detroit, near Coma, a young international airport, was packed with people, many of whom were attending the Black Party, a club event that drew attendees wearing expensive clothes and driving flashy cars. According to several witnesses who testified at the trial, thick traffic slowed to a near crawl. Police believe Cersei planned to kill a man named the Anthony Witcher, whom he had a long-standing feud stemming from arguments over drugs. Witcher told the jury Cersei shot him once before in 2003 and threatened to get him at the club. Witcher was offered immunity in another 
criminal case in exchange for testifying against seriously. So people will testify against you, if, whether they know you or not, to get um, you, you know off what they doing. But the investigators believe was an attack intended for which your seriously mistakenly killed Jamal Sagers and wounded Brian Minner, who were in the car similar to which his prosecutor said. I'm going to be reaching out to those guys, see if they want to make some type of statement. Police said Cersei walked from the rear of the 2004 Silver Corvette. Its convertible top rolled down and opened fire from behind. Witcher also drove a Corvette and was nearby when the shooting occurred, except his Corvette was a blue 1998 model. And police investigate notes provided by M Live by Cersei. A detective wrote at the time that officers chased the shooter but were later unable to identify Unable to identify seriously in the photo lineup. Wow. Four other witnesses, however, did ID seriously in court. I told that mother I would get him, Letitia Boatwright, a friend of Witcher who lived near the scene, said she heard the shooter say she identified seriously as the shooter in the photo lineup. Seriously, officer. Eight alibi witnesses willing to testify he attended a family cookout at the time of the shooting. Within minutes of being contacted by M Live through Facebook about her role in Cersei's trial, Boatwright, one of the key witnesses at trial and a 20-year-old friend of Witcher's, called back. She said she hadn't thought about the case in over a decade, but that after reading Cersei's name, memories flooded back. Boatwright remembers being a reluctant witness, but Detroit police detectives canvassed the neighborhood near the shooting and soon ended up at her doorstep on Connor Street. I was pregnant with my daughter when this happened, but Wright said detectives, they literally basically threatened and scared me into testifying against Cersei. What? Boat Wright remains convinced Cersei is the killer, but also claims Detroit police pursued her at the time. Detroit police, according to Boat Wright, threatened imprisonment, saying they arranged for child protection because Child Protective Services to take custody of her unborn baby and offer her a stitching check. And that's true. They will do that to you. They will intimidate you. I will take your children. I will cut your welfare off. I'll cut your Section 8 off. You'll be homeless. You better testify. They will do that. Bo Wright says that despite the offer, she was never paid for her testimony by the Detroit police. I did see what I saw, but at the same time, I didn't want any part of that. Bo Wright said it wasn't even about no money for me. They forced me to do it. What? The Detroit Police Department spent more than a decade from 2003 until 2014 on the Federal Department of Justice oversight after an investigation revealed numerous police abuses, including a practice of witnesses during investigations of, curious, of serious crimes. Boatwright, however, stands by her testimony, calling seriously a remorseless menace to society and believes he should remain behind bars. Which one is it, girl? God damn. If you kill once, you'll kill again, she said. You were a cold-blooded killer. It's not an accident. Boatwright said she saw Cersei come up from behind the stop Corvette and Sagers was driving the open fire. Every bullet he had in that gun was let loose in the car. She said he ran past my house. It was like we connected eyes, but we didn't contact eyes. Um, people scatter everywhere. Me and people, we went in the house. Smothers version, contradicting the police and prosecutors argue Smothers says the killing was actually a botched robbery targeting a known drug dealer perpetrated by himself and an accomplice. The alleged accomplice, however, was killed a short time later, September 21st, 2004. Smothers said he and his partner approached Sigurds known as on the street, known as Q and another man sitting in his civil corvette on Connor Street. Sagers was a certified dope boy from the Buffalo Projects off Nevada. Some others wrote in his signed affidavit filed in court. Him and his him and his brother Walla was getting money for real. The affidavit says, I had been on those boys' trail for six months straight tracking. They every move. The only thing about these two boys was their crew. They stayed 20 deep. It was me and my partner goal to catch these boys solo, and I could easily get twenty or thirty thousand for either 
brother's pocket. Smothers claimed he fired six shots total, including a fatal shot to Seager's head. He pulled 300, ca 300 in cash from his hand before running back to Jeffrey's car and fling. Smothers was sent letters to reporters, police, and politicians since confessing to the killing in effort to save um, Fersh uh, Searchy. Smothers also gave a recorded jailhouse interview and confessing details of the killing to Scott Lewis, a former investigative TV reporter who was hired by Cersei. In the phone interview, Smothers said he spent time in the same prison as Cersei, whom he knew by the street name of Skinny Man and learned through other inmates Cersei was serving time for the murder he committed. Smothers said his initial letters to Cersei was unprompted that he was never paid or bribed and is willing to testify under oath if necessary. Credibility? Cersei argues Smothers' previous confessions prove he's credible. Based in part of Smothers' statements to Detroit police, the hitman was convicted of 14 murders between 2006 and 2008. God! Lee! 14 murders? Divided by just like 7 a year. However, according to transcripts from his 2008 confession, the Detroit police mothers never mentioned a killing in 2004. Never mentioned a killing in 2004. This is a crazy, crazy story. Peace and blessings be upon y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this story. You did. Hey y'all, I'm sorry for the interruption. I thought it was over. And then my phone was making a funny noise, so I had to get up out of here. But look, I ain't doing all that super editing. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Okay, now let's go from here. Smother said in his initial letters to Sarah that he was unprompted that he was never paid a bribe. That's where I left off. Okay. Sarah C argues that Smother's confessions prove he's credible based on Smother's statements to Detroit that the hitman was convicted of 14 killings. Now um, I read that you said you did all your shootings in 07, says the officer who listed as Sergeant Williams in the transcript. I wasn't sure when this, you know, there's so much stuff in my head, some others reply. I thought some of it might have started in 2006, which was the first one, which was the first one you did that Sergeant asked directly. You know, I think Will was, some others said, but like I say, I'm not certain. There's so many, and he's not lying either. That boy really a hitter. Seriously, cites the reverse conviction against Sanford for the quadruple murder on Ryan Street. The appellate court ruling reinstating a whistleblower lawsuit against corrupt Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick and the suicide of the Detroit police officer as evidence of Smothers' credibility. Now, this police officer allegedly had his wife killed. By Vincent Smothers, just, just, just juicy, just getting deep. Smothers said he was contracted to kill Rose Cobb, the wife of Detroit Police Sergeant David Cobb. He said the officer arranged for Smothers to kill Rose Cobb and staged it as a carjacking and robbery outside a CVS pharmacy while the officer briefly entered the store to make a purchase. Now, the Smothers disclosed details of the hit to Detroit Police Cobb was arrested, but later released when Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy ruled there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute. Cobb later committed suicide. He was found hanging in a wooded area at Dodge Park in Sterling Heights about 4 p.m. September 26th September of 2009. Though the investigation into the Smothers Detroit Police Officer Ira Ty learned of an alleged business or personal relationship between then Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick and James Davis, a high-level criminal with drug and fraud convictions who lived in Kentucky, according to a whistleblower lawsuit that Todd later filed against Kilpatrick in Detroit, he was punished for reporting the connection. No, whoa. Smothers said Davis' cousin Ernesto Nemo Davis assisted him in multiple contract killings. Two of the victims were found and burned in a burned vehicle registered to James Davis, according to a February 16th. 2009 disposition of the assistant chief Robert Dunlap. Police in Lexington, Kentucky, told Todd that James Davis operated a criminal, a criminal drug ring linking Detroit and Kentucky, and had um, development deals 
underway in Detroit. Whether the judge reviewing Cersei's case agrees to Smothers is credible won't be known until next month at the soonest. Tell me what y'all boys think. And you know I'm with this reporting side of thing. People get paid all the time to take cases for people, you know what I'm saying, to get them out of prison. I still think that's a commendable thing that he did. If Cersei did do the murder, he's a freaking idiot doing it outside an airport. Are you stupid or you dumb or stupid, huh? And my Takashi voice. What's going on, man? It's crazy. Tell me what y'all think. Make sure y'all smash them links at the bottom. Make sure y'all hit me and Young Gill up on Instagram. You dig? Peace and blessings be to y'all, my brothers and sisters.